All right. So Rick, Rick, uh, it's Rick Fawcett, right? Yeah, we we say Fawcett. We Fawcett. don't say Fawcett. Okay. You're not because fancy. You're a, you're a down to earth guy, right? Pretty down to earth. Yeah. I should start calling it more man or more mom. <laughs> more man. <laughs> <laughs> so Rick um, has a YouTube channel called Rad Garage, stands for Rick's Audi Double. I feel like I know Rick, but I don't really know Rick. And so, um, you know, we message from time to time, uh, we usually ask him questions and stuff. And so I came up with this concept, Rick, where I wanted to make several uh, episodes where I talked to uh, people that, you know, I respect who have, who have tried lots of products to go through what I call my master collection uh, or my process, right? So basically, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to go through a spreadsheet, and, and I want to know what I'm missing. You know, so mm. we'll, we'll kind of line by line in, in car washing and then wheel cleaning and then you know, polishing. And I'm interested in, you know, what comes to mind, you know, in products you've used, products you, you know, you know you were considering, um, and, and we can, I'm going to kind of take notes on the right, uh, and I'm doing this. I did it with pan a couple of days ago. I'm going to do, um, Corey from car pro, maybe get, you know, Levi and Anthony to do it with me, uh, from, from the rag company, uh, and find, you know, get several others to maybe Jeremy from science shine supply to just go through my process. And I mean, you know, me, I, my feelings don't get hurt. I, I want to get, I want you to lay it on me. Say, dude, well, you're nuts for using that. Or yeah, I get it. I, I know why you're doing that. I wouldn't do that. Or yeah, makes sense. I use the same, the same product for, for that part of the process. And so um, one of the, one of the big lessons I've learned in sharing, you know, my life experience and sharing, you know, my process and sharing what I do, it turned into a store, of course, turned into Obsessed Garage. That was not like by design. I didn't plan to do any of this. It just kind of happened. Uh, and so I'm, I'm always personally revisiting it. And I thought, well, man, I've got all this, this audience of people. So I asked them, Hey, tell me what I'm missing. And I have all these friends and the, that are interested in this stuff too. So tell me what I'm missing and I'm not afraid to be wrong. And so that's, that's the concept of, of what we're going to go through here. And so to kind of make help sort of bring it together or, or explain oh let me share my screen first before i go and do this i've i've always admired park tool as a as a brand and they have let me see if it comes up here quickly they have these kits right these collections uh, and so I'd always wanted to buy this. You know, it's ninety eight hundred dollars, right? I'm like, man, wouldn't that be sick if I could just get this whole set all at once? And um, I've never actually pulled the trigger. Um, I've almost done it several times. I had it in the cart, and I realized <laughs> I don't want this stool, and I don't want yeah. the frame straightener, and I don't need these frame tools. And and so then, which I love about uh, I love about Park Tool, if you click on their master kit, they have this spreadsheet. You know, oh, you know, you love spreadsheets. I freaking love spreadsheets. You know, that is satisfying. And so you roll through here, and you can say, "Well, yeah, I need a T forty seven tap. I need a right handed, left handed. You know, um, I know I don't need a three way hex wrench. I already have that, so I can un, you know, I can, I can take that off the list. And so, you know, guys like us, we love catalogs. I love looking at catalogs and circling or crossing out. You know, and then building spreadsheets. Uh, and so what my intention has always been, it's been to take my detailing process, take everything that is in my garage, everything that's in my cabinet, and then build this, build a master collection. And so that's what I did. And, and I don't know what's taking me so long to get here. Um, it's, uh, it's finally sort of, I finally sat down the other day. Uh, and, and what I realized is that my garage at home I didn't have a complete set. It's gotten weird for me. You put yourself in my shoes. I have OGHQ. Yeah. I have the Helen house. I have my house, you know, my personal house. Uh, and now I have a new OGHQ. Uh, and so I have all these different buildings and OGHQ has a full set of all my detailing stuff, but my house doesn't. And the reason for that is, I do most of my detail in OGHQ. You know, I have mm -hmm. a lift and everything there at my house. I don't, but I'm losing the old building because I bought a new building. And so this 
spark it's springtime time to dial in my cars uh and so i thought well i really need a complete set of the stuff at my house and so i started making you know getting out yellow pads and making spreadsheets and say what do i have what am i missing because i had some stuff but not everything and so i went to the obsessed garage site and i went to the shop garage and i started here and went there and went there and went down every you know every part of the thing and then realized, well, I'm missing a lot of stuff. So I just built the darn spreadsheet. And I said, well, now is the time to build the master collection. Uh, and so the master collection, to put it into perspective, and then I'll shut up and let you give me some input here. The master collection is $14,732.92. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so that is what I have in my cabinet. Now, this is master collection, not just basic right so this is this is functional but un, there's a lot of unnecessary right you could certainly get by with less and so if you were to look at say car washing um i have what is the master which i call ultimate which is everything that i have in my cabinet i created an advanced package and then there's a basic what do i need to wash a car what's basic you know a basic car washing package 250 bucks but mine's 650 you know, yeah. what's in my cabinet because i have four of these pads and four of those pads and extra stuff you know i've got extra gallons of things and and so the master collection is what you would dream of having this is what i dream of having in my cabinet so there's going to be a lot of things there that the average guy doesn't have the average even detailer wouldn't have but there's no redundancy there's no waste there's nothing in here that i mm -hmm. don't use now i don't yeah. use it every day but there's nothing in it I don't use. So that, to set you up, that's the context of what the master collection is. So I wanted to kind of take you through this, you know, process by process, line by line, and you just let us lay on us what, what comes to your head, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. And I'm, I'm looking at it from like, let's say all of my stuff was gone. What would I rebuild my garage with? Correct. To equal this and... I don't, Matt, I'm going to be stealing more than I'm going to be contributing. I'm afraid. <laughs> I, I've already written a few things down, but yeah, take me through. Let's, let's okay. do it. Cool. All right. So bucket package is pretty simple, right? So if you were to look at the bucket package, the ultimate bucket solution, um, you know, it's three buckets. It's three caster or three, three sets of casters, three dollies, three sets of bucket stays, three sets of vinyl, um, three gamma seals, three detail guards, you know, inside of the inside of the buckets. And then we give people some options. I'll give you I'll give you guys on this video a little sneak peek here. Uh, this is uh, my inbox never looks like this because I uh, it might get all my Friday reports. But check this out. This is what I'm planning. Um, these are the new buckets. So I'm going to make all different hey. kinds of all different kinds of buckets. So we did like a little hem tag and we're going to yeah, put yeah. some some logos on here. We redesigned the bucket vinyl and I'm going to do all kinds of different, you know, Halloween, you know, like version. I'm going to do all kinds of versions of buckets. I probably shouldn't tell anybody this because they're going to want to steal it from me. This is my spec right here. This is Maddie's spec right there. You know, um, right. and so we're redesigning the buckets, but the buckets have always been a point of contention with the with the the internet yeah. um because it's well you look it's 330 dollars yeah now i think my cost on that is like two 240. and so what people forget is that well you have vinyl which is 20 bucks you've yeah. got i'm doing six gallon buckets which are like if you go try to buy six gallon buckets you can't buy any less than five mm -hmm. And they're 22 bucks a piece at Uline. And then you got to pay like 20 bucks each to ship it to you. So it ends up being like 40 bucks a bucket. I'm buying them in bulk. And so I'm not charging that much for them. And so if you were to go out and try to build this package, it's always been a point of contention that it, you know, it costs a lot. I understand it's 330 bucks. I understand that's ridiculous. But, <laughs> you know, if you want it to be, this is what it costs. I, don't, I, don't, I want it to be less, but it, but it's not, you know. And so people think I'm buying it for thirty bucks and selling it for three thirty. Which yeah. just go to Grit Guard and try to buy the the the, the dollies. They're fifty five bucks a piece. Yeah. You know. And so so um any input anything um, what do you use for buckets? What is your suggestion? Well, I was lucky. I I hooked up with Grit Guard a few years ago through Instagram, and they sent me the buckets I currently have 
which are, I've got a black for wheels, all black. I've got all red for wash and all blue. And I love it. Um, I did upgrade the handle on the bucket though. I oh yeah. Know. They have that little snappy thing. That yeah. They... The snap together one. It yeah. was a real cheap upgrade, but man, when you're lugging five or six gallons of water to wherever you're depositing it, 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 it was quite nice, cheap, easy upgrade. That's their product too, isn't it? Um, I think it was Detail Guards, to be honest. Oh, no, Snappy Grip. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point. Let me put that on the, on the spreadsheet. Well, look at that one picture down there. It shows, I don't know what your, I, I don't have your, but look at that picture there. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. Let's see, Snappy. You know, it's the master collection. Throw a couple three dollar uh, Snappy guards on there. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> we'll have to we'll have to consider that because the other little plastic handles they break all the time. Uh, yeah. So then, if we go into microfiber, what's your um, what's your microfiber pre pre preference? Do well, you, you know, recent, different brands. Well, I like to do. Um, I don't think you've heard of Detail Popo. I think it's more of a Canadian distributed brand through Carzilla. Um, they're cheap as chips and they, they work for me, but I've recently, I've tried some, I've tried the whole line from fiber factory. I was actually quite impressed, hmm. um, but I've got, I've got a real dog's breakfast of, of microfiber mat. Sometimes I don't even know what, where I got a towel. It's just a towel I like. I would think you've got a very, yeah, fiber factory. These were friends I met when I was in Chicago last spring. Hmm. Um, I have one of each and I would I would recommend giving them a shot, seeing what you think. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Was, bookmark it for later. Take a look later. Yeah, I'll put oops. Yeah. Really good team too. They put a really nice care package together for me. And that means a lot to me when people take a special interest. Yeah. So I could also make me a little biased. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Fiber factory, cool. Yeah. All right. So, um, you know, I, I've talked about this at nauseum with the audience, but um, you know, the press all stuff is always a point of contention with the world. And so, yeah. you know, my story on press halls. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to get a great bottle and sprayer. They are not the great bottles and sprayers at the moment. Um, they are the, I believe, the best base to start with. They seem to be the most willing to work with me. They've already spent millions of dollars building the bottle they have. I'm asking them to spend another million dollars or so to get to the bottle that I want. Uh, and so in order to convince them that there's a market for this, I ask the audience to say, hey, I like them in their current state. And I just deal with the facts that the tips break and the sprayers can't handle break buster. Um, but we're working with them to fix all this stuff. And so yeah. I can pretty much promise you in the next, you know, six months or so, I'll be sending you some press all bottles and you're going to fall in love like everybody is. Um, but what is your current bottle of preference? What do you what do you like the most? Well, you know, to add to the contention, I'm not a big fan of using replacement bottles. Most of most of the product I use comes straight out of the bottle it comes from in the from the manufacturer. I've had limited success with IK sprayers and mm -hmm. it's something that I don't really obsess over to be honest. Hmm. I also because I'm always trying different different products. Yeah. Gets a bit cumbersome for me when I, oh, well, I've got this bottle, but I can't, I got to get rid of what's in this bottle so I can use a different product. So I'm the wrong guy to ask about, about this one, Matt. I'll defer right. to whatever you believe to be the best way forward. I like that. I like it when people defer to me. That's always good. Yeah. All right. So let's dig in deeper here. So let's talk polishing right mm -hmm. polishing in general and so we'll start with pads and kind of work our way down here through compounds and yeah. um i'm kind of interested in your take on this so yeah. let's talk about um uh, cutting pads uh so more aggressive pads what's your what's your preference there well i really like the rupes foam uh sorry uh the wool pads do you yep yep i got those down here so those okay. are so the coarse blue medium yellow yeah so I, 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 coarse blue and medium yeah they 
they knock out about 95% of what I do. I can't believe how well they finish and they've obviously got an aggressive cut to them if, if you want it to go that way. I, you've got every Rupes foam pad there. I've had, I don't know, like I've had good, good success with Lake Country, the sure. HDO, but you know, I, I wouldn't mind having one brand that was just, I've just got such a dog. It's like my microfiber towel. Sometimes I don't even know what pad it is. So <laughs> you've got, you've got everything here that I can see. Yeah. So I'm doing, Rupes, I'm doing Rupes white, yellow, and blue microfiber pads. And really there's a misconception that it's like one cuts more aggressive than the other. No, it's just the backing is a little stiffer. Right. Yeah. And so the white is softer. And you know, if you're doing like the kind of hip on a 911 or something, it's easier to contour it. Um, and, and you know, I tend right. to prefer the yellows because it's a hybrid. The blues I very rarely use. So that's why I have less blue because I use a lot less blue in my in my collection here. Yeah. Um, you know, and this is a, this is the dream. I mean, just look at the dollar number of pads you're talking about here. But it's the dream to always have a dozen pads on standby. Right. I mean, that's. That's what every every guy wishes they had. Now, if you're a professional, you may have sixty pads, you know, on standby, yeah. Yeah. you know. And so, um, I um, I actually have become such a snob that I don't wash them anymore. I know. I, just, I put them up for sale as soon as you know at fifty percent off because uh, they have about fifty percent margin anyway. And so I ba I basically break even, and I say, hey, you wash them, I'll give you a sweet deal. I get them out of my, you know, get them out of here. And so I'm always opening up new ones, but I would like to have 12 on the shelf ready to go at all times. So that's, that's when we're talking master collection, that's what master means to me. You know, when we're talking about the, the biggest, I'm on board. and then I'm on of board. course, Rupes doesn't make one and a half or two and a half. So that's where we are two and a quarter. Uh, so that's where we go to um, Lake country. You know, they, they make them for us. Uh, and then for everybody, uh, and then I have white and I have less white than yellow. Cause I use yellow, you know, foam quite a, quite a bit more than I do, um, a yellow and we have all the various sizes. And then it's interesting. Would you say that you use wool as your go-to over microfiber? Uh, it's probably 50, 50. Okay. But yeah, like I'll start with yellow foam. I have a lot more of those. And if, yeah. if things are working out well, I'll stick with that. But yeah, if I'm not happy, I I will go to wool. I. What's yeah, your take on what do you what would you say the advantage of wool is? Why do you like wool more than than microfiber? Well, it was actually Sean Gulliter who was with you in California mm -hmm. at a polishing training seminar when those dropped, and he brought them back, and he he told me, and I I defer to him for a lot of things. That they're just like the wide range of situations you find yourself in. The wool, the wool has a lot of flexibility mm -hmm. to meet the, the the criteria. So I don't know. I just I like them. I feel like they're easier to clean. I like unlike you, I do clean my pads and <laughs> I run one of those Lake Country uh, System Four Thousand. You know, the, puts the water up into the pad, and I think with the wool, they just. I can use one or two pads to do a whole car. So you're a um, you're a pad washer convert. Lately, I have been. Yeah, yeah. You know, a little dampness on the pad doesn't doesn't scare me, and mm -hmm. I used to blow it out with my compressed air and put dust everywhere, and you know that's not good for the cellular structure of the foam pad. So I like the the Lake Country Four Thousand. Oh, that's cool. And so, oh, see, see, I'm the opposite. I like. I tend to prefer microfiber and it's probably, it's probably just from you know, using it a lot. Right. Uh, and then, then wool is always my secondary. Like if I can't get microfiber to do what I want it to do, then I'll go to wool. But of course the biggest advantage to wool is it doesn't heat up as much. You know, it, it dissipates yeah. heat. It dissipates better. the heat a lot better. That's right. 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 So it's a little more predictable to work with on, on, on most type of paint, most, most paint systems. Right. Um, and I never really thought about you, right. Especially the blue, the blue is really easy to clean out. You know, it's easy yeah. to clean. So it sounds like we're in a similar, similar, you know, use case there. You may throw in some Lake Country if you have some of those laying around. But in general, you know, the Lake Country and the Rupes stuff is so similar. Um, you know, shoot, yeah. wouldn't be surprised if they, yeah. you know, they share. We're pretty, we're pretty spoiled. I think technology's come so far since, what, 15 years ago, you and I were 
Mm -hmm. just scrambling for whatever we could get our hands on. And now Mm -hmm. things are pretty much perfected. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the thing, you know, Pan and I were talking about is I, I feel much less of a draw to be jumping around um, yeah. I did than I've have over the last, you know, 10, 12 years where I'm, I'm just bouncing around from product to product because there's, there, there's, there's technology, you know, changes or, or there's change in, in compound change in codings. Uh, and now the, the Delta between something new and old is oftentimes negative, you know, some of the new yeah. stuff isn't as good as the old stuff. Cause we, yeah. we've kind of, I don't know that we've reached the pinnacle, but unless they change something with paint systems, it seems as though we've, you know, detailings, at least their exponential or their parabolic upside seems to has flatlined or flattened out at least to, to some yeah. extent. Yeah. So what's your thoughts on compounds? What are your favorite, co- you know, compound first? Like your, 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 what do you use to cut with? Yeah. Um, so I really, lately I've been doing a lot of one steps. Okay. I just time-wise for me being, Doing videos, you know me, those videos I do take a while. Sure. Um, I really like O'Burke's soul. Okay. Um I I like I see you've got the boss. Where did I see it? Yeah, you've got the boss mask yeah, cream. Right. That's a nice one. Mm-hmm. Um, are you familiar with tax system? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, they have one called refinish. They have a one, two, three system. Tax system, I believe it's two. It's the blue one. It's called Refinish. It's a very flexible, you know, middle of the road, uh, great finish. Um, But you see, (laughs) again, I have probably 14 products that would fit that one. I don't know if you want to clutter up what you've got going here with my suggestions, but there's a guy out of Florida that does, he's called Turbo Wax and he has something called the Swirl, oh, what is it? I think it's the Swirl Killer 2.0. This guy, it's, this stuff is special. I think it's called Swirl, Swirl Killer 2.0 it's by Turbo Wax. I tell you, I grab that thing more often than not. Hmm. Small company, pretty much a, you know, a guy who's just making product on the side of his detailing company, but yeah, is it better than Jess Car and Sonics? No, I do like Car Pro. You know, I've got what they've got probably five or six different compounds yeah. in their line. And was talking, you know, Car Pro Ultra Cut. I, I have a bottle Ultra Cut laying around somewhere. Yeah, um, and then they have what they have, what they're called refinish or something like that, or they're. Mm-hmm. Or they're, they're yeah, I find they're very like if I'm doing if I just have a little bit of water spotting in a coating, if, mm-hmm. I can't remember the name of it now. It's for whatever yeah, essence, Pro, uh, essence, essence plus. Essence. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Good yeah, I, and when I've had to use essence on like like my black S2000, like it was the only thing that would work, you know, because you yeah. couldn't wipe it with a darn towel without scratching the darn thing. Yeah, you need so real- so so the turbo wax, the the swirl killer, or you know tax system. These are the things that are maybe a bit more obscure, obscure that you you know tend to, yeah. tend to grab off the shelf. Yeah, and it's and it's odd to me to be recommending it to you because it's just some one of these things that's fallen through my filter and it's still in my cabinet. And I find I'm using it more more often than not. So well, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for what mm-hmm. am I missing? That's the whole point, and that's the title of this video. You know what? Mm-hmm. What do you know that I don't? You know what do I know <laughs> that you don't? We kind of share it together, and you know we all figure this stuff out together. You know that that's 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 sort of the theme of this this idea here. Well, I'll email you later because I know I'm going to forget stuff. I should have probably been in the garage for this. All right, <laughs> but those are the ones that come to mind for for uh, cool. compounds. Polish. What a, what about um what do you use for tape? Do you what tape? Do I use for tape. I use is Car Pro the red one? Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, I use Car Pro. Um yeah, only because it's the one that's most readily available to me. Sure. I have sure. No issues yep. with it. I don't over tape my car, so one yeah. roll could probably last me, you know, DIY guy probably a year. <laughs> yeah, same here. Yep, yep. Yeah, and I've got the different widths, yeah. And then what are you doing for uh, your, your, your surface prep? Um, yeah. Um, well, I really like fireball has one. 
Oh, what's it called? Fireball re something. Oh, what is it? Fireball. I'm gonna have to Google it. Yeah, if you go on Fire Reborn, love it. Yeah, love that one. Um, I've been using DIY detail products a lot lately because I've gotten to know Ivan and he's been very generous in helping me. They're, they've got a nice whole, their whole line's very practical, especially for the DIYer. Perfectly named. Yeah, panel prep. Oh, prep yeah. And there was another one that came up there by uh, Armor Detail Supply, ADS. I think it's called Prep, or is it Prep Plus? That's a nice one, too. I don't want to clutter up your shelves, though, Matt. Well, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to, I might buy one <laughs> of these and try it, you know? You know, me, I'm, I don't listen to anybody. I got to go. I have to make a spreadsheet like this. This is awesome. Yeah. So, no, I, I'm joking. Uh, I'm taking this feedback and yeah. some of this stuff, um, like I've made a list here of some things that I'm looking to buy, you know, like, mm -hmm. Um, you know, and some of the stuff you may actually suggest. And so well, some of this is the stuff I've already ordered. Um, yeah. But, you know, it just this is what I've been doing my whole life. This is what you've been doing your whole life. You know, you just get stuff and try stuff and it's fun, you know, and and yeah. um, and it's and, and I've I actually purposely have taken a little time off from just buying stuff because I, I had everything. And it's like I could only get like one or two things. I like to get like 50 things new to try. Uh, and, and I had to wait a year and a half or two because there wasn't anything new, you know, and I don't yeah. like one thing. So um, I'm planning on spending, you know, a bunch of money and trying a bunch of stuff. And, yeah. uh, and, and to me, that's a lot of fun. And I, I like it when UPS is coming like every other day with new boxes and stuff, you get to open it up and try it out. So I've been very fortunate lately. Companies have, opened up to me and discovered me and big big boxes are coming this spring it's it's fun yeah when well you, it's good for you i don't get anything for free i have to buy all this stuff i don't know how this works <laughs> you know you and pan get everything for free they get maybe because they don't like you like i mean you know you're not a nice that, canadian they send it that send canadian it. charm for sure <laughs> <laughs> no i i generally don't just because i'm i'm in a different place than you guys i'm a retailer and so i don't want to be um yeah. It's just easier for me to just buy the crap, write it off, and then you know I'll sell it or give it away or something like that. It's just easier, it's quicker. I don't because I don't want them wanting ever anything from me. Yeah, um, and so um, it's just something. don't want to be beholden to anyone. I get it. We're all right, in different I'm, situations, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it, I'm just in a different, um, a different kind of spot. So let's talk about polishers. Um, first of all, have you? Yeah. Have you gotten the Merca in your hands yet? No, I like. Oh my gosh! It, I I know you're talking about it's the best polisher on the planet. It, yeah, yeah. I um, we'll see. We'll see so how things go. I'm off to Japan, so I'm going to be financially ruined for a, a few few months after this. But it's an interesting looking tool. I just the name sort of throws me though. Well, well, Merca's the main, um, you know international body shop like polish or, or, or sanding company you know, that's their expertise yeah you know, production sanding and oe sanding at you know oem manufacturers you know Merca is like this the standard yeah um, i hadn't heard of it till you brought it to uh a lot of people's attention so so they they have no business making this thing they don't really do dual action stuff and they just kind of caught lightning in a freaking bottle Okay. Um, there's, there's some idiosyncrasies like it doesn't have a trigger lock which is really annoying so i'm trying to work with them to get that to happen mm. um, i just talked to them they're they're actually my sales rep just pitched them today um I, I i need them to make it with a smaller battery so we need the two and a half amp hour batteries which we don't have here in the u.s uh, so we need a two and a half amp hour battery package because the the five amp hour battery is too bulky and so it kind of hits the panels on some sort of cur on curves and stuff um, but it's the smoothest, quietest, simultaneously most powerful polisher that exists. Wow. You know, and it makes the Rupes sound like it's a freaking bunch of pennies in a bucket, you know, grinding away in comparison. Even the new Rupes, even the new one where they're balancing the quarter on it. So the the I have it other than at SEMA, I use the you know the fifteen and twenty one, but the the yeah the three inch the HLR seventy five. 
yeah. is not great. You know, it's yeah. ergonomically nice. It's nice to use. It's very functional, um, but it kind of falls apart. And they've made some made made some adjustments, made some changes to it, and also it's four hundred and seventy dollars less for the Rupes. Yeah. So I, I get it. Um, but something like the three inch um, uh, Merca and and also another little. Um, little thing that to cue the audience into a little little tidbit here if you've made it this far into the video what my plan is rick i'm gonna build i'm gonna build a mastermind of us you know guys like us so i'm gonna choose you know 40 50 you know let's say 30 content creators and we're gonna build a mastermind where we meet you know once a month or maybe twice a month on zoom together for a couple hours I'm going to bring in you know, like business coaches, bring in, you know, YouTube experts, bring in, you know, big, big YouTubers or big, you know, content creators to sort of talk to us about things. Um, but I'm also going to use that mastermind to go to Merca and say, hey, I need these 30 people to get these polishers and I need them to get them all at the same time. Um, and then part of our mastermind conversation would be, hey, let's tear this thing apart uh, together. Let's talk about it. Let's learn about it. Let's launch our videos all at the same time so we can kind of flood the market with information so everybody can learn about it. Um, and then we can use that to collaborate with each other to grow, you know, grow audience. Uh, and so my plan is to build this mastermind and then to get everybody a Merca polisher, get everybody, you know, the new Rupes polish, get everybody what you need. So that way we can all talk about it and learn about it together. Um, so that's, that's one of the things I'm working on, you know, this year we'll, we'll start to launch that. And then, you know, people use the affiliate links at Obsessed Garage. And my, my plan is to get everybody sending links to me and I'm paying everybody a bunch of money, but I'm making a bunch of money because of it, you know? And so, so, so that's, that's the plan. And I'm going to be in Canada by year end. So we'll have a distribution facility in, in, um, in Canada. I'm not going to go to Calgary. I decided it's going to be in Ontario. Yeah. Um, Mainly because I'm not going to build my own warehouse. I'm going to partner with Toolgrid. Uh, very likely, Toolgrid is going to be my my um you know my third party distributor. Uh, yeah. And um and so because they have they have extra like twenty five thousand extra square feet um, that they I would I would love to fill. Uh, they already have the employees. They already know how to know how to ship. And so I'm going up there in a few weeks to figure out if you know they can be my my partners up there. Well, I was always going to, I think I told you, starting from scratch out here in Calgary would have been a very daunting task. You could do it, but I think that makes more sense what you're doing there in Ontario. Yeah. And then I'll just go, then I'll do my destination OG house in, you know, in, um, in the heartland, you know, that's, that's what I want. Well, that's when I'll be your, uh, I'll be your huckleberry. We'll go do some, out, we'll do some show homing out in the country there. We'll get you your. Uh, we'll get you your 40, 40 acres and a mule, Matt. I love it. Love it. So anyway, now, yeah, polishers. Polishers. Yeah. What's 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 the skinny? What's what's Rick use in polishing? What's your favorites? Well, you mentioned the 75E. I've had one of those for probably eight years now, and it's been a workhorse. Yep. So and I use it probably more than I should just because it, it's just so flexible and it just gets in all the spots. And then I have the 75 uh, the LHR 15 Mark II. Mm -hmm. And I recently had that refurbished by a guy in town and it's been awesome. Mm -hmm. I really don't even, I don't even feel the need to get a new polisher, but the, the new, new polishers, they fascinate me. And are then you I, a, are you a ahead. washer mod guy or no? No, I never did the washer mod. I'm not that, yeah, I'm not that technically obsessed, sure. um, but I've never really been frustrated with my polisher and, I've been watching a lot of BS online about the rotary gang ganging up on those that use the DA. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm not caught up in that. I, <clears throat> that Mark two has polished probably 50 cars for me and everybody's been happy, including myself. So yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I have a nano for, you know, for okay. that YouTube influencer shots, you know, you gotta have the, mm. but so uh, so oh, I, I I refrain from this in the master collection, but in the real world, in in Maddie's real garage, um, um, I call it quads. I have two short necks and two long necks. One in rotary, one in DA or long third DA, and one in rotary, one in long third DA on my bent, you know, in my cabinet. So I'm balling out of control with four no, no, no. four you have four hybrids. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't, yeah. I didn't put that in my master collection because I think that you know it's, a little over the top. But Just because te technically, in my sh in my cabinet, so I'm cheating a little. Maybe I need to change it. But technically, in my cabinet, I've got quads. 
<laughs> and a PXE80. The only reason I have the PXE80 is really just for the FS140, the flexible shaft. Have you seen yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. You get in there with the little. Yeah, it I sucks to PXE. use. I the, sold the, it. I, I sold it a long time ago when I went to Rupez. I was like, well, I can't have flex and Rupez. I'm yeah. so stupid. I should have kept both of my flex machines. Yeah. I will tell you that the flex XFE7. The 12 millimeter three inch is is a lot better than the Rupes LHR 75E. Yeah. I'd say 25% better. Is it cordless or is it both? No, it's corded. You know, it's corded. Yeah, it's corded. I don't mind cords. I, I really don't. I like when I get that Merca in your hands, you're going to call me and you're going to tell me that I'm a freaking magician because it is the most magical thing you will ever experience in your entire life. And you will never use any other thing other than that. So what well, we'll I be- can't do a whole car with a three inch polisher. Are you saying? Sure. Gonna- no, you certainly yeah. wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. But, but I might. Yeah, you would. You, you're going to do you're going to probably you'll do you'll do a, a good third more of the car than right. you have done previously yeah. because it's yeah. freaking magical. Yeah. But it doesn't have a uh, trigger uh, trigger lock. It does not. And so, so you're, the whole time you're having to hold that trigger down. Correct. That's the annoying part, right? It's, it, it's it, the way this, it's set up and how tight and light it is. It's not like the end of the world. If right. you were a pro um, and you were polishing two, two or three cars a day, you know, or trying to you know polish, yeah. and, you're, and you're you're on the machine for hours and hours and hours at a time, it'd be problematic. The advantage of the trigger it is variable. Um, so you can, you know, it's kind of like if you've ever used a pneumatic, you know, yeah. air driven, like the LHR 15 mm. or LHR 75, the 15 millimeter pneumat- pneumatic, um, it's kind of like that, um, where you can kind of pull and push and pull and kind of control it. Okay. But, so it's, yeah, it's not like a, a hard trigger that's, you've got to no, really no. to depress. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah. The only, so what I'm, tr- what I'm working on with them is to convince them to make, cause they can do it in software. The reason this thing's 880 bucks is because of the software. It mm-hmm. has an app. And it's all set up for OEs, right? So they set up for like a targeted, like 30 second runtime and it turns off. So if they can do that, mm-hmm. there's any reason why they couldn't do like a double pull for a, you know, for a trigger lock. So I'm, I'm working on it. So hopefully we can get it soon. So you got the claw tool there. You got to have that. Yep. Yep. Two of them in the master collection, of course, you know, just because one, you know, one's on one bench and then the other one, you're like, where is the freaking thing? Oh, it's in my pocket. You know, that's that's why. You know, we got a couple of those. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's get into washing, car washing. Yes. So here we go. Here's my wheelhouse. Yeah. So what's your favorite soaps? Well, I do love GSF. I see you've got that up top. Mm-hmm. I also like O'Burke's uh, APS. I like, um, are you familiar? You, you're familiar with everything, but have you ever tried NV? Yeah. Uh, no, no, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. NV out yeah. of Australia. Yeah. Used it the other day. Cause when I'm not making a video, I could do whatever I want and I don't have to worry about, I just grab. I grabbed NV snow the other day. I had a really good time with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like Armel, uh, ADS, Armor Detail Supply Shampoo Plus. Yep. Oh, who's got that one? Who put that's that there? Pan. That's Pan. Yep. Who is this Pan? You've mentioned this guy a few times. Is this, is this Pan's list over here? Am I supposed to know this guy? Yeah. 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 I like that. Um, man, I like all kinds of soaps. Um, but I've been, uh, I do like the Starn Gloss Snow. Yeah, I don't even know how to spell that one. Stern uh, gloss. Oh, it's got a J and an A in it. Yeah, good oh. enough. That'll get you close enough on Google. Ish. Yeah, S N O. It's good. Um, you know, once in a while, I do use Adam Strip Wash just if I feel like things need to like kind of like a reset. I know you've 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 mentioned you've liked it in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I could go on and on. Like I could list you every soap I have, but those are the ones I think. Yeah, they would stay, you know, pretty permanently in my garage. And so yeah, what about, already, um, what about drying? Are you a drying aid kind of guy, or are you a top? It could be more and more. I tried. Um, there's one by detail firm called Defend. 
actually liked it. Um, but you know, normally I bone, I get that car bone dry and then I apply a, like a finishing spray, but like, detail firm defend is good. Um, yeah, I don't do rinseless anymore. I, I spent too much getting my concrete set so I can use a, a proper two bucket wash. So I'm, I'm out on rinseless. My cars get too dirty here for rinseless. Somebody um, made a comment on one of my videos the other day. Um, I guess because Anthony from the right coming hour, you were arguing about rinseless. Yeah, you guys had a good back and forth. I enjoyed that immensely. And so the guy, guy said a rinseless wash is like taking a shower without water and a washcloth, you know, after like, you know, running a marathon or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was I'm not going to disagree with him too much, but yeah. on a, a light wash, I get it. But I have so much dirt and salt gets in the crevices that you're never going to get out unless you're using your pressure washer. Mm -hmm. I'll do 10 passes with a pressure washer once I foamed my vehicle and yeah. dirt is still streaming out of the gaps between yeah. like, especially on the lower parts. Like I just... It is a bit like a sponge bath in the hospital versus a shower when you get home. Right. You know? Yeah. But, yeah. And and I get it. It can actually be safer, right? With the oh, yeah. insulation and stuff. But you're gonna you are gonna use 45 towels. Yeah. And, and you're not gonna get the wheel wells and you're not gonna get the barrels of the wheels and you're not gonna How do you do the wheels on a rinseless? No one's ever answered it. Like you just destroy, you just, I guess you put a just, full body suit on, a hazmat suit on and get in there and just dirt all up your arm by trying to get in there. No, I, and you know, there's parts you missed, you know, there's parts you missed. Right. And you don't get the rotors blown out, you know, all the dust that sits in the back of the caliper and on, you know, on the, the yeah. dust hat behind. Hmm. And yeah. It becomes it's a shortcut really method for, yeah. For when you don't have the wherewithal to go up, to go and do a proper traditional water wall right yeah and I, and I get it i get the appeal it's just it's not for me sorry i just got some crap in my eyeball um what about your pad what do you use and do i wash with well i've been using the car pro merino wool mitt for probably 10 years okay and the thing i like about it is it's only one-sided so i find the mitts that you know you put your hand in and then you've got this mitt on top of your hand that's just heavy and bulky and gets heavy mm. with all the water. So the Car Pro Merino wool mitt, you just stick your hand in and it's just mesh on the top. Mm. Um, but some people have complained because they took, they, uh, I influenced them into getting one that it smells. Some people have said they've got a bad smell from theirs because, you know, it is pretty organic, but I love it. I love it. I don't really uh, use anything else. I'll have to check one of those. Have out. you ever tried it? Have you ever tried their wool mitt car pro? If I have, I don't, it does not, doesn't remember. Um, that's not I'd, be, I'd be curious to see what you thought. If I'm, I'm certain that I've gotten one, I just may have just never even used it. I don't know because I, it, you know, especially that's been around a long time. And, and yeah. I have in, in three or four different instances have bought everything that car pro makes. Are you okay over there, Matt? Do you need me to send someone? Give me one second. I just have to fix my contact. Oh, it's your contact. Yeah, just sitting here going through Matt's master collection of products. Yeah. Insane. I just went cycling, and so I got a bunch of dirt all over my face, and I probably just rubbed it in there. In fact, let me just take them out. <laughs> Popping them out. I really should figure out who this pan guy is. Matt keeps talking about. I think I've heard of him. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. I'm back. All right. Merino wool mitt. What about uh, wheel cleaning stuff? Anything you use that uh, top of mind? Any special tool that you love? Yeah, well, you've got the Griot's Garage four-finger mesh mitten here. I didn't think that was available any longer. No, those are the um, 
those are for bug remover, the yellow ones. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. So the one that used to be the Grios is uh, the lambskin mitt, and I use that on in the. Um, right. So I bring that over from um, from uh, the UK. I forget the company. I think it's like Detail Back. Yeah. Something. I like still that. have one Grios that I'm holding on to. I don't know if they made it or if they brought it in, but yeah, I love I, that thing. Love it. Yeah, so th this this is the little yellow bug remover. Thing. I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the mesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. This guy. Yeah, yeah. I don't use them very often, but I don't sometimes. have any of those. But I could see the appeal. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes I break it out and use it. Back in the old days, I used to use it all the darn time. Yeah, you've got the easy detail brushes. They're they've they're a classic. Yep. Yep. The small and the large. I. It's it's defunct now, but I was using the the I think it's the wheel well brush. So it wasn't the longer one. It was a little bit more of a stout one. Yeah, she wore out on me, but they do have a blue one, which I just don't like as much. But yeah, I've got those. I use any kind of brush on the for the lugs. I I I don't know if it's a race glaze one, but I've got. Yeah, I don't think you need to try out different brushes for that. Yeah, pretty simple. What about yeah. your wheel? What about your wheel cleaning chemicals? Um, okay, yeah, up, up to the chemicals. Always trying those out. You know, I always land on Adam's wheel and tire cleaner. I just, I, I find it just a little bit more effective than Breakbuster. Mm -hmm. And she just, I don't know, it's, it just lathers up so quickly for me, and I just have to have lather on my wheel. Yeah. Um, are you a foam cannon on the wheel kind of guy? Nope. Well, I have an IK alkaline 1.5 sprayer. So yep. I just, I just pump spray it. I've got a, I put the uh, gray tip on it. So it kind of bubbles a bit, mm -hmm. but, um, ADS armor detail supply. I like their wheel. I think it's called, I think it's just called wheel. Yep. Um, I recently, and I did it wrong. I took it. I should have diluted. I'm using Maniac line by Mafra. I've got um, TOC supply sent me pretty much the entire Maniac line line. Mm. Um, and it's this line, I think, will become one of my favorites real quick. Hmm. Interesting. I don't um, know what that is. Where'd you get it from? The rag company guys? Uh, TOC supplies up here in Calgary or in Canada. TOC, not. Not T R C T O C. T O C. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, they're. Maybe I have seen that. Maybe they have had it like a booth at a show or something. I don't, I don't yeah. Know. Let me see. Well, they're you... yeah they're they're working really hard to penetrate the Canadian detailing market. Doing a good job at it. I think it's out of the UK. Maybe it's not out of the UK. These guys. Yeah, I've seen this. Yeah, I've definitely seen these. I think they had a booth at SEMA, maybe. Yeah, they're coming on strong where you know where where I hang out in the circles I hang out in. This one's coming on strong. And Lab Labo Cosmetica, that's that's gaining a lot of traction too, but I haven't tried it. Yeah, I've yeah. I walked through their booth. Yeah. Stuff. Uh what about um do you do you ever do like a um like a rust stop or anything like that? I've tried it with it's never worked for me. It's yeah. never worked for me that hide stuff. Yeah, to me it just it's it's an aid, it helps. Um, yeah, it's not a it's not a it's not a complete solution. I think Adamac could be. Um Okay, yeah. So, so Adamac number, for yeah. me Adamac is going to replace, you know, uh the i'm bringing the um I'm, i heard i almost have it done <laughs> i keep thinking i have it done and then i gotta go back and you know, we're revisiting the math and um mm -hmm. you know because my intention is to not just retail it through obsessed garage but to you'll be the wholesaler right so my my experience has been rather annoying in that i make a market in a product like the merca yeah, you know, nobody know. I understand the market exists, and you know it was already there, and a few people had it. But when I take it on, then you know it kind of tends to take off, and, yeah. and then I get screwed because the mo the thing I'm more worried about is not getting paid on all of them. It's that then I can't even get them. 
right? Yes, you and popularize so, it and then you get locked out. I can right, see that happened with Bead Maker. Like I popularized the darn product and then I yeah. can't even buy it because they're out of stock. I'm like, what the fuck? What is going on? <laughs> this is crazy. Well, so there I'm are working some, to solve that. It's got to be tough in the States because everything has a distributor. But up here in Canada, when a new, when a new line gets popular, yep. there's people that are jumping right on and becoming the distributor. Yep. And then, yeah, you're making these things popular. You're getting the word out there, but you're not the one. Yeah. But uh, have you used a lot of the built hammer products? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I've had the, I have the whole line. I find the ergonomics of the bottles and everything just really frustrating. Yeah. I, like, see, I, don't, I, I don't care about bottles because I'm redoing them. You know? You're putting, yeah, you're putting them in. Yeah. Well, that's a good argument for having a lot of. Uh... Yep. So the plan will be to have built hammer in Canada and, and at a reasonable price, direct import from, you know, from the UK in, mm -hmm. in, you know, in Canada and, you know, later this year, that's the plan. You know, and I'm, yeah, gonna, they, I'm gonna have most, yeah, most of the OG products in Canada available. And then I'm not coming to steal Carzilla's business. I'll supply some of the unique products that I have to them and some of the yeah. unique products that they have, I'll buy from them and we'll, we'll do it all together. The rising tide will raise all ships, you know, is the oh, good one. Good one. Yeah. Yeah. So tire dressing, love your tire dressing. I, man, I love, um, detail firm has one called trim and tire care. ADS has a nice one. NV has one called uh, Onyx. It's a satin. Yeah, NV Onyx, O-N-Y-X, is my probably my favorite. I feel like I'm giving way more product recommendations than Pam. I can see his. You're not allowed to look at his. I mean, but he didn't even give you a tire dressing recommendation? No, no, no. He just went some target targeted some things that you know. Yeah. Oh, the two of you when you get together, it must. I gotta see that. I have to witness that. Oh, well, video time. video will be up tomorrow, so <laughs> watch it. And I want you to take me on one of these hikes you took Pan on. Uh, he's a freaking sissy. Well, I, I yeah. I'm gonna make you a sissy. You should see me hike. Let's do it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, oh, okay. I'll, yeah. I'll bring an electric bike. All right. Yeah, he's a freaking yeah. He's zero athletic ability. I mean, you know, <laughs> he doesn't pretend though. He knows who he is, and he's no, no. He, yeah. in fairness, he's like, look, dude, I don't want to hike. I'm not. Yeah. Going. And like, no, no, come on, let's go. Uh, and then, then when I just let him, you know, he got halfway up, and then we just let him there, and then we went up to the rest of the way, and I'm not even breathing, and he's dying, and walk up the rest of the way, and then he sat there for thirty minutes, waited for us to come back, and then we walked. Uh, up. Well, his version, I liked his version too. Yeah, yeah, what was that? Well, who the hell does this guy think he is? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bionic right, man. In, interior. You don't even do interiors. Yeah, sometimes I do. I have okay. Yeah. You got a lot of color lock there. I haven't really. Um... You haven't messed with color lock? Uh, no. No, oh, we need to get that. We need to change that up. No. So I'm, here's uh, here's my my philosophy on leather leather care is that you know lots of people use APCs which is probably not cool. smart lots of people use coatings which is probably not smart um, I leave the leather to the leather people uh, yeah. and and try to master the process that the leather people provide and in my uh, experience all the detail companies have a leather product that they don't know jack about but they just Put it out there, uh, sure. and so you know, like you know, you know Lexol, and and then you know everybody's basing it on some version of Lexol, you know, and yeah. so the the Geons and the Car Pros and the you know they they have very little expertise. So it's always been Swiss Fax, yeah, and Color Lock for me. Those have been always the two brands that 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 I've always used for leather care. What's what's your take? Very similar. I remember. Swiss Fax to me is like the ultimate luxury leather product. Yep, yep. Uh, but just sort of dis disappeared. You know, they never really, I don't know. I just, you never hear about Swiss Fax anymore. It's like they just disappeared. Um, you mentioned it. I do use Gion leather, leather cleaner. Um, but I don't know if you need to write that one down. Yeah. Oh, I see. Pan's got, uh, is it Geist? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ram's been after me. Like, uh, he calls me every other week, starting to get me to. Uh, well, yeah. he, him and I really hit it off at uh, the Creator Summit, if that matters to you, Matt. Yeah, I've known a Ram a lot, long time. He's a good dude. He is uh, such a nice dude. Yeah, um, I just need to, I, you know, I hate doing interior, so I hate testing yeah. that. And so I, he, I have it sitting on the shelf somewhere. Um, and I've got a freaking to use it. He, he yeah. Does. Dr. Beasley sent me a huge care package of their interior leather stuff that I'm going to get Chris Ricana to walk me through this summer. Yeah. Like, they have so many leather, this and leather that. And it's, it just, to me, that brand, I think leather is their game that and their mat, their mat washing. Sure. But, yeah. um, I'll let you know, I haven't had a chance to yeah. really crack the, the algorithm. Color lock, uh, man, that's a lot of products there. Like, well, so what you have is you've got you know protector, which is for leather that's three years or older. So what what you would do is you'd either use mild or mm-hmm. strong cleaner, one or the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you know strong cleaner I use more often than than not. You know, especially if it's a car I just got. Uh, and so it's just you know the small and the refill, and then you have mild cleaner, and then leather shield is your staple. But if your leather is three years or older, then you would put leather protector first, and then you'd top with shield. So protector is more of like a conditioner, and then the shield is your protective layer, your sacrificial layer. I always have some burrs on an electric car with some bullcrap vinyl seats, uh, and so their artificial stuff is pretty legit, too. Um, So right now I have a Rivian. I had a Tesla. You know, I got their, you know. It's freaking plastic. They call it vegan leather, right? Which is nonsense. There's no such yeah. thing. As, there's no such thing as vegan leather. It's plastic. It's vinyl. It looks uh, like turkey bacon. Come on. Right, right. It's so stupid. And then, so next, Al- Alcantara cleaner. Have you ever used that? On no, but cleaner? I've I've tried the Maniac line has an Alcon- Al- Alcantara cleaner that I'm hmm. excited to try. Um, I notice you don't have Coach Cami Polestar and Top Star on there. I find inside a, a vehicle, those two are hugely flexible. And gummy fix for anything that needs sort of a, um, you know, like I do a lot of winter mat. Yeah, Ooh. I freaking hate that product. Yeah, you try it. It's a little for you. Yeah. Yeah. But Polestar in a little pump yeah. uh, foams it up. And then Top Star sort of to, for um i think that one's more for like the vinyls and the hard plastics man yeah i had them and i just threw them away maybe i should try oh. so do you carry kutch kimmy yeah 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 i i find that line's just fantastic like, you know i have i have kutch kimmy asc i like yeah. fu fresh up which yeah. is great to you know to, for scent you know or you mm-hmm. know, kind of addition if you use like first, if you you hit that, like let's say you had a smell and there's somebody puked on your carpet or something, you would you know hit it with some, um, um, you know obviously clean the carpet first, but then I would hit it with some baking soda overnight, just you know dust it on there, deep vacuum it out, and then I'd hit it with fresh up, and fresh up helps to you know take the stink out, if you will. Yeah, yeah, I've got a bottle, I haven't had the occasion yet. Yeah. If you just go, just go spritz it on your, on your fat, on your fabrics and it smells like laundry detergent. It smells great. Expressions the whole, God, my car. I just spray it directly on or I'll spray it on and then vacuum it out. You know, it doesn't have any cleaning capability, but it's, it's just for scent. I find it really awesome. Well, let me ask you this on your list. What would you hit a really dirty winter floor mat with? Um, what kind of car? So I have tux mats, you know, that ballistic nylon type of all protective mat. What I would do is I'd go to tuxmats.com and I'd buy a new one. (laughs) (laughs) My budget's not quite there, but I'm tempted. That's that's what I would do. So you you ask, you know, I'd go to Porsche.com and order new ones. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I, I just can't wait till you come up here and, see what the winter conditions do to it. I understand. I'm from, you know, not as brutal as you, but I'm from the the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania and it was gross, you know, just so you've seen you've seen a bit. You know, I do like Adam's rubber mat and liner cleaner. It's mm. it's so I won't say it's cheap, but it's not expensive and it comes in a big four gallon and man, that thing will last me a couple of years. It's it lathers up so quick and it's 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 good. But 
if I'm doing things really proper, I would use the Coach Kimmy Pole Star. Yeah, gotcha. okay. Or green. Yeah, or is it Green Star? No, that's for exterior. All right. Yeah, yeah, Green Star is all APC. Yeah. And, yeah. So then I've got color lock and cleaning brush. Um, you know, I like the good old fashioned reach and clean tool. You know, the stoners. And, you know, oh yeah. Brian, oh yeah. Jack, jack the windows. You know, to get a yeah. Print. They've made a billion bucks off that thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Rightfully so. What are you doing for protection these days? What's your go-to coating? Oh, insulins? well, I um, my car is currently coated with Nano Resin Pro by Doctor Beasley's, but I'll yep. be. I've been talking with Tim Coates at Ethos. I think I'm going to try his second version of the Ethos graphene coating. Okay. Um, he's going to help me out with that. We're going to do a video like this where he sort of runs me through the products and processes, and then I go and do it. So I'm going to try that. Um, his first version I put on a, a friend's car two years ago, and the thing's still, still, still performing well. Um, I do like... Um, Armor Detail Supply has a nice ceramic coating, but I think yep. did you try their wheel cleaner uh, wheel coating? Yeah, it's it's the best wheel coating that exists. There's no question. You, I I didn't know which way you. Uh, yeah, I uh, right here. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So I you agree. know, Bradley Bradley's a good friend of mine. Um, okay. You know, yeah. he uh, he and I met at Esoteric Training several years ago. He was an OG follower, and then. He was an OG unfollower for a little while, and then he grew up a little bit and came back. And so he, um, you know, I've, I've followed yeah. his story. You know, of course, he worked for Esoteric, and then he went, moved to Naples and started Naples Auto Armor. It's been extremely successful. And then, you know, he's found a great chemist and blender. And then, of course, he has he has the right temperament for, you know, product testing and yeah. un unwillingness to compromise. And so... Um, he told me I'm not going to like his coating. I don't like grabby, sticky coating. I hated Nano Resin Pro. You know, it's just too sticky for me. Yeah, it's pretty I like. Jam. Yeah, I, I like. And now I'm in Florida. I get it. You know, you need stuff more durable where you are. Uh, if it were me, I would still do G Technic, and I would just do it every year. Yep. You, know? you well, would have to. You know, it, it would fail in the winter, and you'd have to yeah. redo it. Um, but, um, because I like super slick that I like that wax like look, um, and, and, you know, so, or, or I, you know, I'm, I'm always a big fan of car pro coatings. The thing I don't like about Gion is they have 47 coatings and you just freaking pick one. Give me one good, yeah. one, not 37 different versions of it. The um, only one you need is Moe's. Right. Exactly. So get rid of the rat. Moe's yeah. ego. And get rid of the lesser and the, yeah. So the Gion Moe's, the G Technic. And the Car Pro, I I love them all. And me, me but, too. Me too. Yeah, yeah. can't yeah. go wrong. Um, I've played around with the more exotic ones. Like um, I really liked what's oh, the Japanese name? Kamikaze. Sure, ISM and Miyabi. Yep. Yeah, Miyabi. Fireball makes an amazing line of coatings. Yep. Um, pro only though. I don't think you can just buy them retail. Right. The uh -oh. stupidest business model move in the history of business model moves is pro only. Yeah. 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 Hey, let's uh, let's let's sell yeah. only to a small select group of people that you know don't tend to have a ton of money, um, and they're you know they're just working for a living. Yeah, it's grinding like, it out. Yeah, right, it's the <laughs> dumbest business model I've ever heard of. Let's keep our best product. Sorry, detailers, but you know, just think about this logically. If you were the maker of the coding, you wouldn't sell it to you. You would want to sell it to me, right? You'd want to yeah. sell it to the rich douchebags um, <laughs> that, that you'll be, that will buy four bottles of it. You know, that's what just because it looks good on the shelf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I th I think the pro only model is terrible because you know the whole point of it is that they make it easy. Now, some of them I get it like that. You know, some of them you gotta like damp towel and you gotta get a curing light and you gotta do all this weird, you know, stand on one yeah. foot and you know, point the car to the north, you yeah. know, to north in order to get the coating to work. I get well, that. But there was a guy that already gave, on, you know, wipe them on and wipe them off. About three years ago, there was a guy who got his hands on, I don't know how, crystal serum. He's not even a detailer. And he said, I want you to put this on my car. And I was so nervous. I thought this is gonna be so difficult because I'm not a pro. Right. It was exactly the same as using any other coating. 
like easier, in fact. But use your eyes and your brain, and you yeah, wipe it off. right, right. You right. wipe it on the car, and you wipe it off. It really. should be they. Sh if they were smart, it would be polishes, right? You know, aggressive compounds should be pro only because that you can actually actually require skill, right? Or yeah. maybe sandpaper. You know, that would be yeah. pro only, but not the last step, which is the easiest thing to do. Yeah. So what about uh, glass? I'm on a glass hunt. Um, okay. Wolf's works great for me, but I am a psychopath. And yeah. I am manage my wiper blades um, almost, uh, you know, obsessively. Yeah. Uh, and so Wolf's has a great user experience. It just does something magical to the window. But if I put on my wife's car, it's toast in three weeks. Top. Why is that? What's, what's well, it's a, it's a nano sealant, you know, it's not a coating. Um, yeah. it's, it's a, oh, I see. Yeah. I like the, I don't like water shooting off the windshield. I don't like too much beading. Mm. I like a, a, and it sounds ridiculous because you'd think, well, I want all the beading mm. I can get. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like wipers juddering. I don't like it to have a weird look, you know, to the windshield because yeah. some coatings will give you a little different look uh, when you're looking out it. And so I just, every time I try something new, I always end up coming back to this wolf's crap and it cost me a fortune to import it from Romania. You know, half the time the bottles, half of them have exploded. We can't oh, speak English. Um, it, it, there's no way it should be 55 bucks, but it cost me a fortune to get it here. Um, and I just keep coming back to it. So what are you using on glass? Well, I've, I've never found anything to be effective on glass up here. I, same, same concerns you have. I got the wipers are shuddering. Yep. yep. Um, I think the last thing I used was stoners. Yeah. Ceramic glass coating. Yeah. There's is a hunk of crap, man. It's well, I, I, I honestly, I had a guy come who had this, he came and visited me. Great guy. But like within three months, it, it was like, there was nothing on my windshield except some residue around the edges that I had to sort of polish off. So I think maybe Matt, you need to bring something to market because I've never been happy well, Bradley's on it. He's working well, on, you know, something really great. Um, I the, say that, but there's Art to Shine's. Art to Shine did a really good glass coating. I put it on a friend's 1976 BMW 2002, and honestly, the glass is what stands out on that car the most. Hmm, I think it's – they, 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 they do graphene. I'm sure it's got graphene in it or something. But So the other thing I like about Wolf's is it doesn't – it doesn't um, – you know, even like Rain-X. rain has this like instant smear failure, mm -hmm. right? And so the solution to a, a sealant that doesn't last very long is just put it on all the time. You just keep yeah. popping it. You know, yeah. keep keep addressing it. Yeah. Um, and but you know, we kind of we should have gotten to the point to where we don't have to do that anymore. Now, everything except for the windshield, I just coat with CSL XO now. I just put the regular coating on. It works great. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. windshield doesn't work so great, but on the rest of it works fine. Yeah. Um, there was a uh, Gion does a glass plus now that has a little bit of. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I just keep my glass clean. I don't. Yeah. I don't obsess about the, the coating on the windshield. That's for sure. All right. What about decon? What are you doing? Well, have you heard of. Iron X by Carp. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Gion has iron. That's what I use mostly because I've been supplied with gallons of the stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm nervous to try the stoner one because I heard it stains your garage floor or driveway. Ooh. But then they changed it. Okay. Um, PNS Iron Buster, Tarex. Yeah, I haven't used. What's that Koch Chemi one there? The RKB? Uh, that's just a clay bar. Oh, that's a clay bar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, yeah I got we'll, nothing to add on that one. We're bringing the built hammer clay bars over. I, I mean, I use a clay like maybe like 10% of the time. If I'm doing wheels or, you know, if I just got a car, it's really nasty. But 90% of the time, I'm using the rag company ultra clay scrubber, you know, or sponge. I used to use the auto scrub, you know. You know, nano skin auto scrub, you know, just you know, just the, the synthetic thing is just so much easier, so much quicker. Would you ever try the synthetic towel that DIY detail has with their iron? 
I right. just don't. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I have. You know, I, I haven't sent me one. I, I don't like towels. It's too freaking floppy. Yeah. You know, the rag company's big on towels and, you know, um, yeah. um, Gadusi, um, Dr. Gadusi was always big on the towel. You know, I just, I don't you know. You like the bar. You like the bar. Yeah, I like a, I like a darn sponge, you know, and so that's where I'm using Anthony's sponge that he made. It's freaking sweet. It's perfect. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. All right. Lights. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I had to narrow down my lights. That's this, narrowed down. Yeah, yeah. This is the one redundancy area you end up using. You know, I, I just, I love lights. Yeah. I don't even use them very often, but I, I love, I, because I've got great light lighting in my garage you know, with Cree LS. Um, and, and I don't even really need lights. Um, but man, I love them. I love having oh, yeah. them. And so they I like narrowed it down. Lot. It was like $2,800 or $3,100 was my, was my lighting package. And I, now it's down to like 1800 or something like that. So Very reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed your um, your input on hex lights. That was, pe- people got to know you. That was, that was, that was comedy gold. It hurts my soul. It's I like know. deep down into my, you know, diaphragm. It just makes me feel anxious and like just. I, I just I, uh, let me ask you when I was at Dr. Beasley's, they brought out these flex lights uh-huh. and they were pretty amazing. They, 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 they were really cool. I don't see have like, have you ever played around with flex? You talking about flex the brand? I am. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what, what, what light are you talking about? Yeah. Check it out. Flex. Uh, detail. Unless it's a different brand, but it looked like the same font, like just like flex lighting. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's the clean garage. Not this one, is it? No, I don't think so. But they were uh, they were really cool. Well, flex. Check it out later. It was flex power tool. You're talking about. Mm-hmm. And then lighting. Any of these thingies? Kind of like that bottom right one there that you just scrolled. There was a bigger version of that that came with a stand and it articulated and it was, uh, and then it, it would fold out and it had, it was really good for studio lighting. Like if you wanted to film a video. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't know Flex made such cool lights. Yeah. I'll check it out. Like this is the Flex that makes the polishers. Am I, am I mistaken? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Flex yeah. power tools. So yeah. they have the, you know, yeah. they, they, of course. They were the originators or the, you know, the, of the, you know, the, the force rotation, you know, the yeah. goofy, goofy, you know, whatever the, that sledgehammer that, you know, for a long time, it was, you, you were either force rotation or you were a DA and it was the DA versus force rotation wars. And, you know, and, and so some people that had their flex and that was the thing. And it is easier to learn, you know, from scratch on force yeah. rotation. I never liked it because it one, it's not doesn't feel I didn't feel as fancy and as elegant, but mainly because it feels like it's walking me around the car. Yeah, it, it manhandles you, especially now, on the doors. Now it's easier because it doesn't stall, right? Yeah. But I just feel a DA, you know, to me it's just a better experience. So lighting, you just grab, you know, when you have like a sun match or something, you just use that whenever you need it. Well, I use that eye match headlamp. Yeah. I, yeah. I have I have okay lighting in my garage and yeah, I, I'm not on this level. Not not at all. <laughs> I've got the Rupes pen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Fancy well, I eliminated I eliminated the base pen and now I got the fancy one, the match pen R. You know, so I gave it up. That was a big concession for me. So I gave up the match pen for the match pen R. Um and- I, I used to have the I would have the sun match. Oh no, I do have the sun match and the mini match because I just couldn't give one of them up. I'm like, I need them both, even though they both did the same freaking thing. One around your neck. I gave up the multi match eight. I gave up the multi match eight because that's the big boy. Um, I gave up the batteries because I never once used one of the batteries. I always plug it in, um, and so I have two sun match threes. You know, so I can put it on the tripod and put them. You know, left, left, and right. Um, and then I did give up one of the line lights. Have you ever seen the line light? That thing is oh. sick. Um, these are the coolest lights ever. If you, you need to get these. The little line light from uh, from Scan Grip, so good. Oh, I do like that. 
Yeah, not for detailing. Mainly for coding inspection works well. You know, as you walk, yeah. you know, turn the lights off, walk down the side of the car. Um, but I just use it because it has the light here and then it has the light here and you can switch. You know, you turn the little thingy and it gives you the option to, you know, switch back and forth. But I freaking love this light. It's so good. And then they have the bonnet one, you know, which you put underneath the, you know, like no, yeah. you know, Ryobi, they all have that. But this one is more elegant. I actually accidentally, yeah. I accidentally ran this one over. It was like sideways on my lift and I ran it over and it didn't break. It's unbelievable. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I have a cheaper version of that, that the quick Jack people sent me. Mm, yeah. Well, this is like world-class, you know, yeah. freaking 200 bucks. Well, it's not that much more than the one I got, but that one looks a lot more sophisticated. Yeah. Okay. man. I think you just lit my lighting fire. Good. Good. Send me a copy of this uh, or what? Yeah. Yeah. I will. You can, you can have this or you can I watch can back the video. Screenshots right now. So then, um, um, last couple of little miscellaneous things. I've been using the AccuPore, like a little pitcher for measuring, a lot more often than I used to use. Mainly because I I made the transition to the Griot's Garage Foam Cannon, and their demarcation is not as as easy to read as the as the MTM. Uh, and right. so I like to have 150 millimeters of soap, which is overkill. But I like to use 150 millimeters of soap and and roughly 750 milliliter solution um, when I'm you know when I'm using my foam cannon with like GSF or Reset. Um, and so I've been using this Acupore a lot. So for people who are wondering what the Acupore is, is this little guy, this little bro. And then somebody made a suggestion to me. He's like, "Well, why don't you just get a bigger one and then mix your whole foam cannon solution up in that?" Hmm. You know, I said, "You know, that's not a bad idea. Maybe I should do that." So I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm, we're gonna bring the uh, 32 ounce or the you know the full liter one in as well. Doctor Measley's metal coat is freaking game change, bro. If you haven't used that, you got to get it. It's yep. so good on on the exhaust, just the exhaust tips. I saw Chris use it on uh, some Shelby wheels when I was down there last summer. Yep, raw wheels. You mean you know like metal, polished yeah. lips and stuff like that. It's and it's super high temp. It's like good to like 1800 degrees or something crazy like that. I don't know how long it lasts because I haven't had it fail, um, but I always put it on my exhaust, you know, the exhaust, like the canister and the tip, and then water just beads up. It's just freaking nice. Really well, nice. that'll help the carbon not bond to the metal and start to embed itself. Exactly. Right. Yeah, it's great. Right. You know, and all this just basic little random stuff. And if you have an air compressor, every, you have to have an LHR 75. It has to be an air compressor that delivers at least 12 CFM, you know, at okay. 90 PSI. Um, but it is a life-changing experience if you've never, you know, used it. Yeah, I've got a Makita M MAC fifty two hundred. I don't think it's got the capacity. Shoot, I just realized. Crap, my master collection had an error. It's actually oh. fifteen thousand fifty-seven ninety-two. Crap. Well, that's it, everybody. Take care. Rick's out. Fifteen grand is my limit. Bye bye. Oh wait, the reason why I had this zero because this was a luxury <laughs> add-on. That's right. This was an add-on because most people don't have an air compressor that can work with that. Well, cool. We got a few things. That's it. It's only you know fourteen thousand bucks. Piece of cake. It looks well, back to the miscellaneous tools one though. I just want to take a quick, this is where I, I kind of have a lot of neat little things. Let me see uh -huh. what you got here. You got the measuring coat, you got polishing soap, funnel sprayer. Well, think about some little things like, Oh, you know what? Some guy sent me uh it's called from mad auto care. You clip it onto your, um, your, your sprayer. Uh -huh. And, uh, when you go to the foam cannon, it'll hold your nozzle tip so you don't lose your nozzle tip somewhere. What's it called? Mad? Mad Auto Care, I think. I think it was Mad Auto Care. Yeah. Yeah, that thing. I just got one. I haven't opened it yet, but it's uh, he's a cool dude. So, yeah, you stick it on there, and then you don't lose your tip. Hmm. It's probably 3D printed, probably... Uh, yeah, a little jank. That's interesting. That's a cool idea. It's just the first thing that popped to mind. I've got people sort of call me up and send me that kind of thing. It yeah. does look a little... Um, we'll see. I'll let you know. Yeah, that's cool. But there are times where I think it's in my pocket. It's not. It's on the other side of the garage. And I got to, you know, putting that in, 
putting down your foam cannon is one of the hardest things. It's just so frustrating. Unless it's full, it's going to tip over on you. It's yeah. I always take my um my tip the the spray tip off and I put it in my pocket. And, you know, as a yeah. little dribble in there and then your pocket gets <laughs> all wet. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hate if that. People only knew the struggle, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What else you got? Anything else interesting? I'll let you know later, man. I'm just sort of a little overwhelmed right now. To a, be lot, a lot of stuff. So you just a lot of stuff. Gone. This is just for your home garage. Right, right. Just, and so, just, and this doesn't include the pressure washer. This is not, you know, all the other yeah. you know, crazy stuff. No tools and stuff like that. But this is, this is the detailing component of what, right. you know, I, and now there's, you know, and everybody can go through. There's nothing in here that's like ridiculous, like that I don't use. I use everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. the thing that gets a little ridiculous, you know, like having various polishes, but many people I've actually, I've forced myself to like, I don't want to have 57 different polishes because then you just start chasing your tail. You're and they go back. Just, yeah. You're better off adjusting your process a bit, you know, adjust pressure, adjust speed, adjust the passes, maybe spray a little water, um, and, you know, use some of those techniques that, you know, Kevin Brown has kind of popularized and, you know, Larry Cosell right. has, has, has made the world aware of, of, you know, like those guys, they all use M10 whatever, you know, they use the, the Meguiar's 105, 205 or 110, 210, and they just adjust their process around that one set of polish. And become experts in that one kind of polish. Now, yeah. I think I think those polishes have gotten left behind, you know, because new stuff has come out. But some of the stuff I'm considering uh, was um, the a lot of different glass coatings. I ordered armors. He has several of them. The Diamond Pro Tech stuff from the Rag Companies. I ordered uh, H2Go and Exodus again from from Angel Wax. Um, they I, I ordered uh, the last cut stuff because. I just never tried it. Have you ever done, used, done the last cut? Yeah, I have. And the I can't remember the guy's name behind it. He Jace. actually reached out to me. It's fantastic stuff. Yeah, I think his name's Jace or something like Chase. Jace, yes. It's, it actually says by Jace. Yeah, and then a bunch of Car Pro stuff I'd like to try out. The new D-Quartz glass coating. Um, they're Clarify Phobic, which is kind of like the... I have that. Yeah, I have that. I, yeah. I doubt I'm going to like, like it. Like Glass Plus by Gion. Just gets yeah. a little bit of it, yeah. Some products that I need to get that I just haven't never put in the store. Solution finish is a standard thing you should have in your cabinet for, you know, for plastics. Good black trim. Yep. Um, also having, you know, Siri glass for, you know, some basic, you know, glass. You know, if you have spotting, water spotting on your glass. The, the common misconception is that you can correct your glass. I mean, you could, but it's going to take you a you know, darn near lifetime. You're better off just buying a new windshield, you know. So yeah, Mike Phillips did a video just recently with was it plexiglass mm. old car? Man, it looked like a lot of work. And I'm going to go back and try all the microfiber madness towels again. I'm going to the rag company in the spring to um, re you know re look at my microfiber package and dig into that. Um, we're going to launch a um, 20 amp version of our vacuum system. You know that's coming. We'll have to get you the OG vacuum at some point. The vacuum's not in here, you know. Um, well, I think you need to do the detailing garage collection next. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's coming. Right. Yeah. So so the, the first step was to get all the chemicals and the process put together. And then from there, you know, from down here in the spreadsheet, oh, yeah. um, I've got my whole team working on, you know, all kinds of detail of, you know, breaking down and breaking out the different packages. But they need my direction. You know, I need to... I need to tell them what to, what to create. And so now while I'm here in California building this crazy garage, um, they have a mandate that by the time I get back, we're totally revamping the entire, you know, the entire detailing collection and creating the master collection. So right here will be the master collection. There'll be a base master collection. So much like park tool, we're going to have it set up. Mm -hmm. No one's buying or very few people are buying the master collection, right? That's not the point. No, wow. very few people are buying the master toolkit from, um, you yeah. know, from from um, Park Tool, but it it creates a a, a list. You know, where yeah. do I start? It's like it, a database. How, how do I? Where would I want to get to? Um, yeah. And and because of, you know, I've been doing this a long time. I'm I'm not a professional, but I'm a professional shopper. I'm a professional, I'm a product subject matter expert. And then I have friends like you, I have friends all over the world. And then I have you know, people watching from all over the world that are providing me data at a rate 
that is almost incomprehensible if you're just a you know detailer in a local town and you tried a few you know a few hundred products. And so and you've you've experienced this as well. I think it's hard for the viewer to really understand what's happened to guys like us where we're drinking from a fire hose. Um, unlike, you know, before we were putting this stuff out on online, we, we didn't have the access to the data, the information. And so most of the time I can tell the product's any good just by looking at it, you know. And, you are um you remind me of Russell Crowe in a beautiful mind. You have a beautiful <laughs> mind for this stuff. Don't uh, don't think there's a we here. You you lead the world in this uh, ability to just process it all. It's well, I love it. I love it. I can't yeah. get enough of it. And um, yeah. you know, I, I like to revisit and revisit and revisit and revisit. Kind of like people who lock the door fifty seven times before they can get in the car. That's kind of like what this is for me. You know, it's like you wash your hands forty five times before you can. You know, that 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 to me is a, a product catalog or in this case a product universe yeah. uh, so what i'm doing with you know conversations with guys like you is hey what little tidbit do i not know that you've come across that maybe i never will unless we i ask you and we kind of go through it so well things will be racing through my mind i will follow up with you at some point because i'm cool. inevitable that i'm like oh darn if only <laughs> i would have mentioned this yeah. Well, everybody go subscribe to it's Rad Garage. I'll put his link in the description. Oh, thank you. Make sure you're following following uh, Rick and his escapades in the garage. He does very cinematic, you know, full car, you know, corrections, protection, detailing. He's also dealing with conditions that, you know, in Calgary that not everybody else is dealing with, you know, where it snows, you know, 13 months out of the year, right? So pretty much. We've had four straight days of it. So I'm off to Japan Monday morning, Matt. Oh, fun. My family and I are taking a two week vacation to Tokyo and Kyoto. So, uh, if wow. there's any Japanese uh, detailers out there, I would love to uh, hook up with them. But I don't know when this video goes live or whatever. But yeah, I'll probably have this up. Um, let's see, not tomorrow. So, tomorrow, oh, yeah. this video goes up, then episode three of the garage, and then your video. So, it'll wow. be like three days from now, something like that. Well, you're in California and you spent this much time with me. I'm surprised you weren't outside surfing or something, but I really appreciate your time. <laughs> yeah, man. I appreciate you, appreciate you spending and sharing your knowledge and be willing to go through this and, and not beat me up too badly. So that's good. Well, um, and vice versa. After I saw you and Anthony, I didn't know what I was in for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I forget that I you know sometimes have a scary persona, but I really am, Rick. I'm really I'm a really freaking nice guy. And I people, tell people that all the time when they message me and go, I don't like Matt. I'm just kidding, buddy. They don't they don't do that. It's wild. Like I'm really I mean, I why do you think I have all these employees and all these people? Because I'm really freaking nice, but I tell it like it is, and that's what gets me in trouble, you know. So, yeah. so anyway. Cool. Well, thanks for your time, brother. Appreciate you. And um, we'll see. Uh, well, maybe we'll do some videos soon. we got to get you to come to Florida. That's what I mean. Uh, I can't wait. Yeah, it's going to happen. All right. Thanks, everyone.